Welcome. My name is Paul Wishmeyer, and I'm a professor of anesthesiology and surgery at Duke University. As background, I've had a career-long passion for clinical and research work studying the importance of protein, and more importantly, how protein can help improve clinical outcomes in our patients. Let's begin with a very quick refresher. Proteins are made up of amino acids, the building blocks of life. Our bodies need proteins and amino acids to produce many important molecules, such as enzymes, hormones, neurotransmitters, antibodies, and of course, muscle. Proteins help replace worn out cells, transport substances throughout the body, and aids in growth and repair following illness. Enough of the Protein 101. Let's shift to protein and its role in critically ill patients. Both ESPEN and ASPEN guidelines clearly state that critically ill and catabolically stressed patients need higher levels of protein every day. But here's the bad news regarding protein delivery in critically ill patients. Most ICU patients receive less than half of the protein that is recommended by the ASPEN and ESPEN guidelines for more than 10 days in the ICU. The impact of not meeting protein requirements for critically ill patients is well documented and can have a significant impact on mortality, post-operative complications, can increase length of stay and hospital costs, and can lead to poor wound healing. When critically ill patients do not receive sufficient protein levels, they lose muscle mass that is critical for recovery. A number of studies suggest that a critically ill patient can lose up to five kilograms of muscle mass over a five to seven day period. The good news is, is that delivering higher protein levels has been shown to help improve outcomes in the ICU. In a recent study by Alberta, in over 2,700 mechanically ventilated patients in 37 countries found that mortality was decreased with each additional 30 grams per day of protein delivered. And this was particularly true when the BMI was less than 25 or greater than or equal to 35. Niccolo recently conducted a multi-center, multinational observational study. Over 2,800 patients who were in the ICU for at least four days were studied, and a subset of over 1,500 of these patients stayed in the ICU at least 12 days. The results found that achieving at least 80% of prescribed protein intake led to reduced 60-day mortality rates. Additionally, time to discharge alive was shorter when patients in the 12-day sample group achieved at least 80% of prescribed protein targets. Vice et al. recently completed a prospective observational study of 736 non-septic ICU patients in a mixed medical surgical ICU. Achieving early high protein, at least 1.2 grams per kilo per day, and energy target delivery was associated with a 50% lower 28-day mortality. Additionally, Zussman retrospectively studied protein delivery and restroom energy expenditure in over 1,100 ICU patients. They determined that both underfeeding and overfeeding were harmful to critically ill patients. And the lowest 60-day mortality rates were seen when 70% of restroom energy expenditure was delivered. Interestingly, in the same study, increasing protein intake was also associated with decreased mortality. Finally, Alan Strupp prospectively studied 113 ICU patients who received gold calorie administration, but three different levels of protein delivery. Survival rates were only improved when more than a gram per kilo per day was delivered, with the best survival being at 1.46 grams per kilo per day. In regards to quality of life, Wei and his co-investigators examine the association between short-term nutritional adequacy in 475 long-staying, more than eight days, ICU patients, and associated this with long-term outcomes, including three and six month quality of life. These authors found that for every additional 25% increase in nutritional adequacy, a statistically significant improvement in three month and six month quality of life was found in medical ICU patients. 
In summary, persistent underfeeding throughout ICU stay, particularly protein underfeeding, may significantly contribute to long-term mortality and quality of life impairments months later. The facts are clear. By providing appropriate levels of protein to your critically ill patients, you can help ensure your patients get the right treatment to give your patients the best chance to survive and recover their quality of life after ICU. Thank you.